My talk today is towards clean air. And actually, clean air is one of grand challenges that, uh, that what is our air quality. It's related to other grand challenges, which are mainly due to the fact that population is growing, population is moving, we have urbanization, the global cross domestic production is increasing. And what do we need? We need fresh air, fresh water, good food, energy. But what do we get? Climate is changing, air quality challenges, big challenges in supplying fresh water and fresh good food. Deforestation, acidification, biodiversity losses, chemicalization, global and at least regional epidemic diseases, and all of those are related to each other. And we cannot really solve them one by one. We need all disciplines. We need different initiatives, like what we here have, Pan-Eurasian experiment. We need science diplomacy, and we need good observations like WMO, World Meteorological Organization, Global Atmospheric Watch observations, and our own initiative, Global Smear Stations. And what is important, that we need to work from ideas to implementation. We need this integrate approach. The Global Earth Observatory, Global Smear. In this slide, uh, there is given this IPCC Index Covenant Panel of Climate Change plot or figure, where all radiative forcings are given. And in practice, current observations are very fragmented. There are different people, different societies, different laboratories working with greenhouse gases, in aerosols, in air quality, in ecosystems, in climate. And they typically even do not talk to each other. The good benefit here in INAR is that we have all of those, and we have very well integrated these. In future, we need this integrated approach to understand feedbacks better, to reduce uncertainties, to mitigate and adapt effectively. Today, I will focus on air quality, air pollution. And uh, here we can see London smog from 1952 and Los Angeles smog from 2016. In, in, this, uh, uh, in the London smog time, there was several conditions where it was not possible to make any photograph, where the visibility is less than one meter or less than 10 centimeters. And then the smog is really very, very serious. Los Angeles itself is more photochemical smog and uh, let's say that less serious, especially in the visibility point of view. Then if you look uh, today's smog in China, left hand side we have this kind of polluted day, haze day, and the right hand side we have clean day. And uh, we can see already a big, big difference in, in Chinese conditions. And today, in most of big megacities, this haze problem, air quality challenges are really huge. If you look the whole area in eastern China from satellite figure, you can see the smog all around the eastern China. And why the eastern China is that important? If you look this map now, half of the global population is living inside this circle, and less people are living outside of it. And if you look this red triangle, from Beijing to Xi'an, to, from Xi'an to Nanjing, to, from Nanjing to Shanghai and back to Beijing. About 10% of the global population lives in that area. And actually, if we want to understand what is going on in this kind of big, big cities, like this red triangle, we need to understand what happened in this uh, pollution cocktail, like in China. And actually, if you want to clean up city air and indoor air, it will require deeper understanding of all these chemical reactions, the interactions between chemistry, physics, meteorology, especially boundary layer meteorology, before we can really understand what is going on and before we really can clean this city or indoor air. If you think about air quality, uh, health effects, visibility, acidification, in China, about 2.5 million people die due to air pollution per year. 
and in Finland about 1,500. And the concentrations, if you think about different pollutant concentrations in China, they are typically 10 to 1,000 times higher than in Finland. And uh, we need to remember indoors. We spend most of our time indoors. That's why indoor air quality is very, very important. If we say that uh, we spend 10% of our time outdoors, this is already two and a half hours per day. And I doubt that uh, people typically spend that much outdoors per day. We need also to remember that we are working with multiple pollutants, particle matter 2.5, particle number, black carbon, ozone, nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, volatile organic compounds. And all of all other of this list is typically observed, typically discussed, but not particle number. Although the particle number is the most dynamic variable what we can have to describe air pollution situation. All of these are interacting with each other. There are several feedbacks and the system is very complex. And we need to go from a deep understanding to real solutions. We need this monitoring or observations before we can understand. And before protecting and controlling, we need to understand. And after these we can improve air quality. I have also made a schematic figure out of this together with Lena Järvi. Emissions, whatever emissions, we need to understand emissions. Then we go to tran transformation meteorology, atmospheric chemistry, this uh, air pollution cocktail. And of course different air masses are affecting to that. You can also, that after understanding these parts, we are able to find out, observe concentrations outdoors and indoors. And then we have effects, health effects, economical effects, society effects, and environmental effects. And then policy making. In principle, policy making in some countries, like for example in China, uh, the decision makers can simply say that let's cut all emissions. But then the economical effects or society society effects might be too hard to meet. That's why we need structural infrastructure changes in energy production, in industry, in housing, buildings, traffic, agriculture, forestry, etc. And these infrastructure structural changes will then affect and cut down emissions in more sustainable ways, both outdoor emissions and indoor sources, which then will affect on the concentrations and, for example, affect our health and the environment. Thank you.